So, uh, hello everyone. I believe this is my first time showing up in this gallery. Um, and I'm going to talk about the overview and some status update on the uh, M68K backend for LVNs. Uh, okay, so just some self introduction. So, um, you can just call me Min, although my name is uh, Bonger. But yeah, you can just call me Min. And actually, I'm currently a PhD student, computer science PhD student in UC Irvine, in the beautiful land of California, which is currently suffering the bushfire and the rocket high number of COVID uh, cases. So we're not in the best shape, but I'm doing fine. <laughs> and um, in case anyone don't know, UC is the uh, University of California. And uh, current, uh, my research interest is, of course, compilers, uh, system architectures, and system securities. And I have been working for LVM for about four years. Uh, primarily, I, I'm I'm more familiar with I, I would like to call the middle end, you know, the uh, the LVM IR or target independent optimization. So actually, I'm still pretty new on um, crafting backends or more low level stuff. And on my spare time, I love coffees. Uh, so I would call myself co uh, coffee junkies and uh, chocolates, and I'm also a motorcycle rider. Okay, so just some background. Uh, wait, before I dive in, is my volume okay? Can you all hear me clear cl clearly? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah. Okay, so just some background. Okay, so uh, I believe I don't need to introduce LLVN because um, well, it's getting more popular nowadays. So in case you don't know, it is just yet another compiler framework that's uh, just like GCC. But uh, um, I, well, I never I never have a serious development on you know on GCC. So I don't know how, how to compare them. So I just give some, some of the highlights here that I think is important for these communities. So I think the biggest selling point for you guys is is super, super easy to do uh, cross compilations. So in, in compared to GCC, of course, because like the cross compilation is um, natively support from the very, very beginning, from around 2001, when Chris and Jim first invented this fr uh, framework. Um, and, and you can see on the right side of the slides, it, um, the reason it can natively support because it divides the entire framework or the entire compilation pipeline into several blocks. And you can just modularly uh, ship in and ship out uh, different backends or different front ends for different programming languages. So it's super easy. And uh, like all you need to do is just download the toolchain from official website and you can uh, cross compile to at least 20 different platform, uh, 20 different hardware and also different platforms. And it has a uh, building assemblers and uh, uh, linkers, although um, I haven't supported the linker parts in this. Um, and there's a backend, but it, it does it, it does have a billion linkers. Actually, the entire LVM project is um, is slowly expanding its scope from a pure compilers to a complete tool chains. So now, you know, at the very beginning, the LVM that even doesn't have a front end for C and C plus plus language. So um, as you can see here, there's a really cute project called LVN GCC is an ancient project that, that takes GCC as a front end and uh, generate the LVN IRs. But of course, as you probably know, now the LVN has a clan, C and C++, or I will call it the C family uh, front end. And um, as uh, after about two years after that, uh, LVN get its own assembler. Although it's, um, it is not the LVN AS, if you have played around with the LVN source code, it is called the MC framework. The MC framework is the assembler for Elvin. And later on, it got a linker called LLD, and it got its own standard C++ library called libcxx. And about a year ago, it even got its own libc. So I think it is a good news that, um, oh, I, I forgot to mention, it also have a debugger, the LDB. So I think it is is getting really exciting that it's slowly developing into a larger, large, larger ecosystem. And of course, um, is a, it has a really high quality C++ code base and supported by major tech giants. Also, there is a more political reason behind why these uh, tech company wants to invest on the Elvian project rather than GCC. Um, I will say because, uh, oops. Okay, uh, I, uh, so the reason that there's so many tech company wants to invest in Elvian because the license problem. <laughs> um, uh, for example, uh, Google uh, switched their toolchain for Android 
from GCC to Elvin because they, at least Google, don't like the GPO license, and the Elvin has more um, relaxed license and the the BSD license. Um, so this is just a side story. And also, there's an advantage that Elvin and C Ellipse C++ could really close to the C and C++ standard. So uh, if anyone wants to do some cool pro project that leverage modern C and C++, like you know C++ 17 or 20, then Elvin will be a really good option. Because uh, as soon as, j just uh, like I, I mentioned in the first bullet point, as soon as you support like the M60A backend, um, you can have a drop-in support of the modern C++ 20 standards. So I think that's the advantage for these communities. Okay, so uh, that's all for the introduction of Elvin. And then let's talk about the uh, this this backend. So this backend has a, a little bit like rough history on it uh, because it first was developed by uh, by uh, Artyan uh, here and um, and also Adrian. So I uh, just want to be, have a big shout out to these uh, two folks because without them, I, will, I, I won't even be here because Artyan, he basically finished nearly all of the source code. So um, the, 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 the reason he cannot continue or fully commit to this project because I think he, he doesn't have um, as much as fine as before. So he transferred uh, all the source code. But when I opened the source code, it was beautiful because it's, it's just feature complete. All the features um, was there. And uh, so just big thank to him. And also uh, the, the source code he gave me has an integration test that, uh, which is important because I can use it as a golden test cases to, to, to verify whether um, any of the modification I made is correct or as expected. But uh, I think the, the 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 biggest problem of this code base is uh, it was based on the pretty old version of Elvian. So just give you an impression now, like uh, now, uh, the Elvian version is uh, twelve point uh, They they just re released at eleven about a few months ago, and as I will mention later, Elvian is a is a really fast paced code base. So the uh, between 8.0 and 12.0 is like totally different world. So that's the reason I would say 8.0 is a pretty old code base. And also uh, Artyom made uh, several changes on the uh, target independent parts, uh, which will make this backend a little bit more difficult to upstream because the upstream reviewers will expect you, uh, expected, you know, a new backend not to touch any uh, target independent parts. So uh, it will require more efforts to convince them our our works. But anyway, again, I like big same to, to this two gentlemen. Okay, so those are the backgrounds. And now we're talk, going to talk about the challenges when I first um, received this code and start to maintain it. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Elvin is a super fast paced code base. It has thousands of contributors with dozens of commits every hour. That was crazy, but that is the truth. And um, the background you can see here, um, sorry about that. Um, the background you can see here is the commit history of Elvian. So uh, now I think there's an average of 400 commits. I don't know is whether this is per hour or something, but I just want to show that the, the traffic of this project is crazy. And the biggest problem when um, I want to rebase this project into a later LVN. So the, the, the biggest problem when I will try to rebase the code base is that LVN has never had a guarantee on the C++ ABI stability or compatibility. So unlike like Linux kernel or other um, projects, it never has any guarantees on the API interface. So most of the APIs change dramatically overnight. Like no exer no exaggeration. It's really like just they, they just change without any notifications. And although there there is a, a C API, but it remains pretty stable. Uh, although it remains pretty stable, but they always lag behind. Like um, they never get the, the latest update of the entire code base. Part of the reason because Elvin, um, unlike uh, GCC, because I know GCC. Um, at the very beginning was a C code base. Then, then they transferred to the C++ code base, but still writing the C++ in the C fashions. 
but LVM was written in C++ at the very beginning. So it heavily relies a, a lot of C++ feature, or I would say modern C++ feature, like templates, like type traits, or all the fancy C++ 14 or even 17 features. So it's really hard to port those um, APIs into C APIs. And so this, um, this stability problem is the number one complaint for downstream users, uh, which is us, because um, un until we, we upstream this backend, we, we still remain a downstream user. And not just the, like the API interface that will cause uh, compilation errors, some of the API behaviors or you know, the API doesn't change its interface, but its, its behavior will also change dramatic, uh, dramatically overnight. So that will also be a problem. Uh, so yeah, so, you know, rebasing an upstream is like fighting a war every time. It is totally a nightmare, not gonna lie. And the second problem is, well, LVM backend, of course, is complicated. So um, the LVM backend itself, or I will say target support, Using a more um, using their terminologies uh, because uh, when you want to add a new hardware, it's just not just adding a backend. You even need to add the support in the client to you know for the for the front end to recognize this hardware. So what is included in the backend is not just code generation. So the first part you need to do is we will call the legalizations. So you basically will legalize some of the well. You need to tell the framework what are the legal. Uh, instruction you can you can generate to the, the, the native code and also we need to do like the friend lowering the calling convention this kind of um housekeeping stuff and then is the instruction selection and the scheduling part and actually this part is is is, is the easier part it's because it can be automated by a uh, table gen a uh, table gen is a dsl a domain specific, a domain specific language in lvn that is uh, for um backend developers to express the instruction formats um, and the, in, the, the LVM will automatically generate instruction selector and scheduler for you. So actually this part is the easiest one. And the hardest part to um, to our surprise is actually the MC layer, AKA the, S, the assembler. Um, the, uh, like when when I try to pour the current code base to the latest, um, to the latest, the latest version, most of the problem I encounter is about the, the object file encoding or like the relocation issues. So this MC there is surprisingly more complicated or more hard to fix than I was expecting. And um, some of you probably knows that, well, the M68K uh, architecture was invented or uh, was one well, of the competitor of the X86 um, architecture at around eight, like in the 80s. So um, at first I thought that, well, since they are similar, maybe I can take the, uh, the x86 backend as a reference when I develop our, our backends. But later on, I was totally wrong because the x86 backend in Elvian is probably the most complicated sub subsystem in the entire Elvian um, framework. Um, part of the reason is because the ISA of x86 is terrible. Uh, it's so terrible that um, we need to add a lot of ad hoc code to it and just keep just make the entire code size like bloating. So um, I, I, I barely can take the x86 backend as the reference. So that's just a funny side story. And also um, x86 backend has a lot of stakeholders. So not just Intel, well, of course, Intel is the primary uh, maintainer, but also AMD and also actually the PlayStation because PlayStation, as you probably know, using the, the AMD back, uh, sorry, the AMD processor. So they also keep a close eye on the x86, x86 backend and maintain them. So it's not just complicated, but also have a lot of different parties uh, modifying at the same time. Okay, so that's, are um, all the challenges I have faced before. Now let's talk about the progress now. So the most important thing is, is that, well, it works. <laughs> now we can have a, a functional compilation pipeline starting from the very beginning, the, the source end. So we have the client support and we, uh, we, we don't need to do anything on the middle end. You know, we don't need to add any uh, target independence uh, 
optimizations, but we have the code generations and we can generate the, the M68K assembly. And it, so it, the, the assembler should be working, but uh, there are several issues just uh, came out yesterday saying that, that the default client toolchain is not using the assembler. So currently it's still using the GNUAS as the assembler, but we're going to fix that. But theoretically the, assemb the, the, the assembler should be working. So, and all these changes are based on the tip of tree Elvin. So this is, this is really exciting because as I mentioned earlier, it's really hard to rebasing um, uh, rebase, do the rebasing on the LVNs, but we still managed to do it. And 90% of the test has passed. So um, the exact number is that we have total around 77 integration tests and 68 of them has passed. And rest of them are, uh, as I mentioned before, is, are actually uh, something related to the assembler. So we are still trying to fix them. And here are some other facts about their current status. Uh, we support different sub architecture from the, the, the 0, 0 to the 40 series. And we also support the IRSA, the, IRSA, the interrupt service routines. Um, and unfortunately on the API side, um, we only support ELF Linux because our short-term goal is to, is to support the Debian ports on M68K. So we will first focus on the ELF Linux API, then probably the NetBSD API for, um, for the next, as our next target. Okay, so here are the future plan. Uh, the first and foremost, and probably the most difficult one <laughs> is to have 100% test passing, passing rate because these tests is represented as like the, 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 the minimum requirement for this project. And of course, we want to test more real world application uh, using the QEMU um, sim uh, emulators. And probably some LLD support, the uh, LVNs linker support, uh, because I personally, uh, personally, I really want to like have a full toolchain support from, you know, now now we have the, the, the front end support, the back end support, and uh, the assembler support after we fix that. And uh, we really want to have like a linker support and a C++ library support, or even the C library support. And finally, uh, there's a, uh, now LVN is actually transitioned to a new instruction selection framework that should be easier to develop and have a faster compilation time. So this will be our long-term goal to, you know, switch into the new instruction selection framework. And just yesterday, we kicked off the upstream process of this, um, this project. Uh, um, and currently, we only have few, few feedbacks. So just finger crossed, hoping that it will, it will go through well. OK, so these are all the slides. And I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, so I saw a lot of uh, traffic on the uh, on the chat windows. I have a question. Is um, uh -huh. you mentioned that there was uh, there was uh, target independent uh, changes in the target independent parts. Mm -hmm. Was that required because the M68K architecture is so different from the other architectures supported? Correct. Wow. So yeah, so that is a really good question. So uh, you're right, it's about the instruction format or more specifically the, the complicated um, addressing mode in um, M68K. So uh, M68K has a, as complicated as the X86 uh, addressing mode, but the, but, you know, the X86 has a, a lot of more maintainer that they can hard code it a lot of you know, C++ code to solve this complicated addressing problem, but we don't have. So we need to modify the table gen, the table gen I mentioned earlier, so that we can, you know, we, we can tell the LVN to try to help us to solve the addressing problem by you know, writing something in the, in the table gen. But the table gen part is the, exactly the, 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 the part I say, you know, the, the, the target independent modifications, because that part should be target independent. So. Uh, we are proposing to change the some some part of the table gen 
so that we can be easier to support those um, complicated addressing mode. Does that answer your questions? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have as much of people as x86. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, hi. Yeah. Uh, hi, Min. So first of all, this is a super, super impressive and very exciting and Oh, thank you. <laughs> I can't tell you enough like how grateful I am that you are working on this and uh -huh. I'm seriously impressed. So uh and I encourage everyone on the on the chat who likes the project to uh like throw some money into the bounty source campaign. So I mean we couldn't collect enough money to to pay you for your efforts because that is I don't know that we would probably have to pay ten times as much. But you know. I guess if you're still a PhD student, you, you will probably, you know, be happy of, of over any tip you can get. Um, anyway, uh, I also have a question. Uh, you were talking about the uh, assembler. So, I mean, yeah. is it is it actually that 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 the uh, M68K backend already has a an actual assembler that that generates binary output? Yeah, correct. So, uh, yeah, I, I know you were talking about the uh, the early issues on our repo. Okay. So, yes. So, I think uh, since LVN has an MC framework about in 2014, they forced the backend developers to specify the all the all the detail, all the binary details in their table gen. So, it's like automatically generated from the table gen. Uh, so, oh. yes, yeah. So, this, yeah, this, it, this is, is what I was it, wondering because I didn't yeah. see. Any any specific effort, you know, working yeah. on the assembler stuff. And I was wondering, you know, how it, you know, suddenly materialized out of nothing. And yeah, <laughs> I oh, guess oh, that explains that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, you, you you need some supported routines to handle some coding cases. But basically, yeah. um, the, the the entire framework force you to specify. So before the MC, you don't need to, you don't need to specify these. But after that, you, you, they force you to specify so that it can generate a, like a baseline assembler. Then you just solve all those uh, coding cases in the assembler. Okay. So yeah, but I think you know the issue um, uh, in our repo is that. The, the tool chain, you know, the, the driver didn't pick up or the driver somehow decided to, you know, pick up the GNU AS. So that's the one we need to fix because of course we want to use the assembly if it's available because, you know, we spend time to fix that. So of course we want the yeah, user yeah, to yeah, use yeah, our yeah, assembly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so um, it seems like, uh, like adding support for a certain architecture to the LLVM assembler seems to be much easier than to bin it, right? Like to do- uh, Yeah. Yeah, of course. I I, I well, I'm not clear. They were that was the reason they want to use MC. Maybe they did. They just want to have a more control. On it. But yeah, I think to me, it's it's easier to understand the MC framework than the bin utilities. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, they they uh, they probably have an advantage of you know like 30, 40 years, you know, experience writing assemblers yeah. now, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, bin utils is old as I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, very cool. Very interesting stuff. Uh -huh. uh, hey, uh, I also Hello. have a question. So I'm a contributor to another compiler project. And I just like, yeah. so I'm familiar with your pains uh, because uh -huh. I also made the 68K backend there. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. From scratch, not completely from scratch. So more or less in your shoes. Uh -huh. um, uh, my question would be that what, What's the story with uh, address registers? Like uh, one thing which is unique in 68K, this address register, integer register division. And mm -hmm. that was sometimes not trivial to get get right in the compiler, at least in my case, that, uh, you know, yeah. right data types go into right registers. Can you talk about that? Did you face any yeah. challenges there? So, so the register, first of all, um, you can specify the register class. So um, that will solve part of a problem. A problem uh, sorry, part of the problem. So you know, uh, for example, the M six A K register have you know the 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 A series you know the address register and the data register. So you can uh, first use the address the register class to divide them. I see. So LLVM has built in infrastructure for this. Yes, correct. The, actually, the table gen, the table gen will allow okay. you to yes. But the the problem I encounter is that is um at this 
the 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 problem I encountered so far is the PC relative because somehow um, the M six AK allow register and immediate to do the PC relative, but it 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 has never been allowed in Albion. So we also need to modify, modify part of the Albion target independent code generator to, to allow these cases. Because as I mentioned before, there's um, there's just you know total different addressing mode in M68K. So okay. yeah, so this uh, this uh, PC relative with index and displacement. That's that's correct. That one, that one. Yeah, part of the part of the uh, format is not allowed before in Albion. So we need to make it happen. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So I have one more question. Um, yeah. Apart from um, supporting you on the bounty source, uh, what else can be done to support your efforts? Uh, I think uh, Adrian and I talked about the uh, the Patreon campaign before. Um, yeah, although um, personally on my side, I have one of the biggest issue on the legal side is that because I'm currently taking a student visa in the United States, so uh, I cannot receive any money you know, when and any money to our to my U.S. bank account, but I think there are several workarounds on that. But still, without this issue, uh, we still need to have a lot of discussion on setting up the Patreon uh, campaign. Yeah. And uh, how about uh, supporting the project by by doing work? I mean, oh it... yeah, that's definitely welcome because um, <laughs> uh, I, I think RTN is still um, in kind of in this party but rtn has um didn't have as much as time as much as time as, as I, I i have so um currently technically there's only um one person you know me um, um yeah so i i i definitely welcome any contribution to the technical side uh for the people who can't code in c or c plus plus like me um is it possible to do some testing uh yes uh, so the testing yeah that that will be super helpful so the testing we're lacking now is more like the testing just like, like like i mentioned in the slide the testing real world application or just application uh, inside the, the qemu emulator or if you happen to have an m68 computer that is also welcome yeah because you know, the 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 integration tests i mentioned earlier those are just you know those are more ideal you know we, we we only test part of the part of component like the assembler the instruction selector but uh, we need um, a lot more test testing the applications so when i go around and and just try to compile the my 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 programs that i like uh, do that under debian m68k and correct see if they compile and if they if they compile if they then also work and yeah correct yeah that, that will be helpful yeah Good, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I have another question. Yep. Uh, I would like to ask if uh, what chance do you see from mostly from a political point of view to get like retro platforms or like old school platform uh, talking about Autoritos and Omega primarily? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, into the mainline LLVM because <laughs> they, they so, were also yeah. thrown out from GCC already. <laughs> like long yeah, so that, that, that is a really quick question. Um, yeah, so you mentioned political, yes, because uh, how LVM works is no different from other um, big open source project. It needs somebody to review, but the most practical problem is that who is going to review some of the, these kind of you know, retro platform? When everyone has their daily job on, um, you know, those most more popular platforms like ARM or x86, you know, it just well, who's gonna review your code? <laughs> so that that is the biggest problem. Um, yeah, so I I'm, I'm still trying to figure out and trying to see how how the things going on the mailing list about my my you know the upstream discussion I just kicked off yesterday. But uh, yeah, I, I really don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know GCC because I I heard from Adrian that uh, the M60, M60A backend on GCC, at least it went through. Uh, but I guess GCC to some aspect is more open to this kind of community efforts 
where Elvian is more, is more, how to say, it, more comfortable if a backend is supported by an institution or a company, you know. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I I know they already removed some some platforms. Like for example, they removed even if they have a Power PC support, of course, and uh, part uh, of Power PC, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, also Mac OS is still a thing. They removed the Power PC Mac OS support already. Like correct, ago. correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of like it makes sense because they want to maintain a high quality, and um, it's true that those platform that got removed has been you know abandoned for years. Yeah. Um, it, it just I, I'm I'm more a little bit frustrated on their attitude on welcoming you know new backends, you know like. Even for like for a new backend, they are more comfortable if it's supported by companies, but it's not our case. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from from of course from a large organization's point of view, they try to make work there and earn money. So yeah, in <laughs> their way is like yeah, not nice and correct. Uh, quote yeah, unquote that, waste of time, but uh, yeah, it's just how it is. Yeah. By the way, I didn't want to sound negative. I'm still really liking this project. So congrats. Oh, thank you. Yeah. OK, I, I believe there is uh, more traffic on the chat window. Unfortunately, I I, I can't read all of them. So if you have questions, uh, please uh, just speak out. Yeah, there was one question on the chat uh, from Christos asking, mm -hmm. um, do you see support for the cold fire architecture? Oh yeah, so I, I believe I see cold. So I believe cold fire is from Fiskar. Um, but anyway, I, I think it's also a M sixty eight K architecture of shoot. Um, yes. I haven't taken a look on it, but yeah, after the the current short term goal, I will definitely happy to see it. Yeah, I only heard about this architecture, but I haven't taken a look in, into it. Yeah. It's it's just a more limited 68k, like it's a much stripped down version. So ah. actually, you can support both. Like imagine, like the operations only world work, work on like the 32 bit parts of registers, mm -hmm. and they, they remove the bunch of addressing modes. So it's more like the original 68k. But they also, <laughs> okay. but, but they also added uh, like some nice instructions which are good from for compilers. For example, move mm -hmm. with zero and sign extend and things like that. Uh, yeah, that that would be definitely helpful. Is it more like a microcontroller version, or is just uh, it, it's still a processor? Uh, I mean, it's it's more like a full on, like uh, it's it it can support like a lot of memory. I mean, the larger ones, so it's a it's a family. They have a lot of variants. I think they have four four is a variants like subclass, but they are quite similar. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Otherwise, it's still the same. Like uh, it's even uh, like the existing instructions are even binary compatible with the original 68k. So it's really mm. like a 68k subset in this. I see. Yeah, good to know. Yeah. Yeah, and I also saw Rust on the chatting window. So I think Rust is also one of the uh, original motivations. Uh, we want to spend more time on this Elvian uh, backend for M68K. Uh, although I know Rust, they are starting to pivot into their own uh, code generator called CranLift. But I think in in, in a short period, they were still using Elvian as a backend. So I'm also excited to see one day the, the Rust work and the M68K uh, support by, you know, after we have uh, more proper support on the backend side. Hmm. I have one more question uh, that would be about, are you aware of any projects that are already uh, using the um, LLVM M68K um, as, as they are either main driver or as, as, as an option to GCC? Uh, I am not aware uh, because even like I, I'm actually pretty new to all these uh, retro computing communities uh, because, you know, as I introduced myself, I'm more like a normal everyday, you know, compiler engineer. So I'm still pretty new to these communities. Uh, but maybe Adrian 
can talk about can answer this question i i, I don't know yeah well there um there's currently one uh problem with the back end or like with the that why we can't use it yet and that's uh, that it has to be compiled with um uh, a forced four byte alignment because the oh yeah uh, the alignment the, problem yeah yeah the, so so when you the thing is when you try to so you can build LLVM natively on m68k and that works uh, but what happens is that when you when you try to compile a file like a C code file with 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 uh, Clang, uh, it is actually unable to find the file and when like debugging this like took some time and we eventually figured out uh, that the LLV, that LLVM that when it was built natively wasn't ABI compatible with the rest of the system and the thing is that so the 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 structs uh, provide, provided by the operating system or by the C library they were using a two byte alignment and and you know and LLVM was you know using structs with a with a four byte alignment and so there was a mismatch so the offsets didn't work out and that eventually you know led to um you know like the the operating system and LLVM not being able to properly communicate but i think if 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 we get if we solve this particular problem and i think it's solvable um then there shouldn't be much of a problem so the thing is uh, I'm constantly trying to to build both LLVM natively uh, and also the Rust backend, which I'm constantly rebasing. Uh, and the moment that actually starts working, so currently it's not fully working yet. I'm so I'm just talking about the native stuff. Uh, I will be upload, uploading uh, snap, snapshot packages to Debian, so then then everyone can just test the stuff themselves. And 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 then it also starts becoming very useful because there are actually a number of packages uh, which have dependencies on on you know on the functionality uh, provided by LLVM or in particular provided by uh, Clang. You know, like because it has these, for example, you can use it to uh, to do uh, code formatting or syntax checking and all that stuff. And some projects like um, like Qt had have started using it, so yeah. The moment it it becomes you know like it becomes usable on on native machines, we will start using it, and then I also assume uh, that we will be reporting bug reports because you know it's it's always like the moment you you start using the thing in the real world. You will always run into issues, but that's perfectly normal, right? That actually means that that people are using it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you see, there's a uh, several road blockers before we can even um, fully functionally well use it. So any contribution is definitely welcome. We'll get to there. I'm I'm pretty confident. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a marathon, and yeah. I haven't so, also, so, I haven't I haven't replied on the mailing list yet, but I will do that in during the weekend, you know, because oh, I want yeah, to thank write you. something longer. So don't don't worry. I, I've seen yeah, it, yeah, I've no read it, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. And and actually um one of the reasons I want to kick kick off the upstream so early, uh, even before like it is fully functional, is because you know, again, the rebasing is a really super, super big problem. So after yeah, yeah. if we if we manage it upstream, then we you know everything will be fine because well it's yeah, already yeah. up to I, I, and, I, I, yeah and, and, and also upstream is always the most important stuff yeah and also like uh, it will classify as uh, experimental target so it won't it won't damage all other existing uh, code base so we can just put it there and it won't build by default but we can enjoy the benefit of getting upstream mm. so i think it's a win-win for both the communities and us yeah is there any other uh, like community supported backends? Because you said like the uh, project refers corporate backing, but uh... <laughs> uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the embarrassing fact. I don't think there's a well, it 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 had in the past. 
know, when Elder so Elvin what is. The, what was the question? Was uh, there another community supported backend? Yeah, yeah, uh, correct. LVM, I, yeah. I, I think I think that may apply to the uh, AVR backend, right? Because oh, I see. I saw they were supported by AT. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if they're actually still actively supporting it because let me see. Okay, I mean, so... I mean, the AVR platform is kind of being replaced with ARM. I mean, the thing is, they, you know, in in GCC, the the AVR uh -huh. backend is actually also more or less unmaintained. So there's one guy from the community working on it, and it's actually on the brink of being removed. Uh, but there's currently a campaign to to resurrect it, you know, because uh, yeah. GCC they're currently, uh, um, you know, kicking out like they're they're working on kicking out all the all the backends that use uh, that are using the old uh, CC zero register representation. Mm -hmm. So and and everything that is not uh, using the new register representation is going to be removed, but. That hasn't happened yet, but they're like, they're like two ongoing. Uh, so it's actually also bounty source campaigns that I started uh, to to like you know convert the AVR backend and also to convert the Vax backend. And see. actually, actually, so the thing is, uh, I talked to the Arduino guys, and you know, I, I notified them about the problem that you know that eventually the AVR backend is going to be removed, and I also. Uh, send a mail to Microchip, who who own Atmel these days. So Atmel is not a uh, an independent company anymore. And interestingly enough, at some point, uh, Microchip just donated five thousand dollars to this project. Oh, that's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, but there, yeah. so there has no public. I mean, I, I've I've heard one guy saying that he's working on it and he made some progress, but I haven't seen any commits to that yet. So. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think I would I would guess that the AVR backend in 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 LLVM I haven't checked it personally but I would guess it's not maintained at the moment by mm -hmm. um by by the company but who knows I mean Yeah, I I saw some discussion about AVR about uh, early this year. Uh, mm. so, yeah, somebody asking just a general question, you know, what's the status, but I didn't follow the thread. So I guess uh, yeah, some maybe somebody is, is also questioning you know who is maintaining this backend. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Min. That was very very good, very interesting. Yeah. Stuff. Thank you, and thank you for all the feedbacks. Yeah.